In this video, we're going to learn how to determine how the enthalpy of a reaction changes with temperature. In the last few videos, we have learned how to calculate the enthalpy of a reaction using either of three methods, uh, the mean bond enthalpies, Hess law, or the best method, which is uh, the method of the enthalpies of formation. Now, a limitation of either one of those methods is that it requires data, or they require data. And generally, the problem is that the data is all provided under standard conditions, which means one bar of pressure on pure substances, and 298 Kelvin, right? So you go to all the tables for standard data, and generally, those are at 298 Kelvin. There's a problem with that, uh, and that is that uh, if you want to calculate the enthalpy of a reaction at a different temperature, from 298 Kelvin, then you're out of luck, right? Because the data is only good for 298 Kelvin. In the lab sciences, we're interested in physiological processes, and for human physiology, the temperature of the reactions is 310, not 298 Kelvin, right? So the question is, how do you actually then uh, obtain uh, uh, the enthalpy of a reaction at a temperature different from the one uh, where you have the data? Right, so this video and next video will show you how to do that in an efficient way. This video uses a thermodynamic cycle to determine the enthalpy of a chemical reaction at a temperature different from uh, the one where you have data. And the next video will be Kirchhoff's law, which is essentially the same thing, but in a, mo in a more compact way. Okay, so here's the idea. Uh, suppose that you take a metabolic reaction like the combustion of glucose and uh, you want to know uh, the enthalpy of that reaction at 310 Kelvin. All right, I'm going to choose just a, a different, uh, more generic reaction just to avoid having to write all those complicated formulas and stoichiometric coefficients. Something more simple would be this reaction. But again, our goal would be uh, to calculate that at 310 Kelvin. The first problem is that we don't know uh, the enthalpy of formation of products and reagents at 310 Kelvin because the tables are at 298 Kelvin. Right, so the, the idea here is to actually use that data, the data to 198 Kelvin, uh, to then determine uh, what the uh, enthalpy of the reaction would be at 310. And uh, we're going to do that through a cycle. So the idea is that this is what you want to do. And you don't know how to go directly from uh, reagents to products. Okay, but notice that because enthalpy is a state function, if you devise an alternative route, that connects reagents on products, maybe through more steps, the enthalpy of the overall process will just be the sum of the enthalpies of the intermediate steps in the cycle. Okay, so we can envision that cycle as simply involving the reaction at 298 Kelvin because we know how to calculate this. Right, this, you could always uh, use data in tables. If this was the reaction of glucose combustion, all those enthalpies of formations for all of these theses are available. Right, so we know how to do this. This is straightforward, uh, plus D. All right, so the, then the only uh, problem here is that we actually need to connect uh, reagents and products in the reaction that we want through uh, this pathway. That's kind of the idea. So you can clearly see that we're going to have to calculate the enthalpy of three steps. This will be step number one, which simply is cool reagents from 310 288 Kelvin, right? Notice that there's, that's the only thing that you're doing. You're just simply uh, elevating, uh, cooling the temperature of A plus 2B from 310 to 288 Kelvin. That's your first step. The second step is just the reaction at 298 Kelvin. And for that, we simply use the enthalpy of formations of products uh, minus reagents because those are provided in tables. And then the third step will simply be this, which is heating. Uh, the products 3C plus D from 298 to 310 Kelvin. That would be your thermodynamic cycle. Again, there's three steps, and the enthalpy of this process will be the, the sum of the enthalpy of the three uh, processes that uh, provide the alternative route, connecting reagents on products at 310 Kelvin. So uh, in the rest, in the remainder of this video, we're simply just going to write uh, the enthalpies for those three steps, and then we'll be done. Okay, so the first one, uh, notice that this is simply a cooling process for reagents, right? So here you would have cool uh, your reagents. Uh, right, so we actually know how the enthalpy uh, changes for heating cooling processes that is just related to heat capacities. Uh, this reaction is taking place under standard conditions. That means that the pressure is one bar, okay, and it's constant. 
and then uh, what we can then do is say that the enthalpy of that process on a per mole basis is simply the integral of the heat capacity uh, times differential of T. That's uh, between uh, T1, uh, which will be 310 Kelvin, and T2, which will be 298 Kelvin. Now, uh, if we assume that the heat capacities do not depend on uh, temperature, then this is very simple because you can factor it out of the integral, and then that integral is simply delta T. Okay, so this uh, makes perfect sense. Notice that delta T uh, will be 298 Kelvin, your final temperature, minus 310 Kelvin, your initial temperature. Just for uh, simplicity, we're going to write here that T2 will be 310 Kelvin, and T1 is 298 Kelvin. Right, so notice that in this particular case, if you would define the temperatures like that, right, the final temperature of the first step will be 298 Kelvin, and we call that T1. And then uh, the initial temperature will be 310 Kelvin, and we'll call that T2. And again, this, this notation of what is T1 and T2 is just convenient, as you will see later on. Okay, so what is this heat capacity that we have right here? Right, that will be the heat capacity of reagents. Okay, so that will be the sum of the heat capacities of each individual reagent multiplied by the appropriate stoichiometric coefficients. So in reality, what that is, is, is uh, the sum okay, of the heat capacities of all reagents, which I, can, I guess I can call I, uh, multiplied by the stoichiometric coefficients, which is this um, uh, symbol nu. All right, so let's write that down so that we can actually uh, make sense of this, right? Notice that what you have here is that uh, uh, this total heat capacity will be the heat capacity of A multiplied by an stoichiometric coefficient of 1 plus the heat capacity of B multiplied by an stoichiometric coefficient of 2 and all that multiplies this uh, T1 minus T2. Right, that is how you calculate uh, a heating process in this first step that should, sorry, cooling process in this first step, that should be a negative enthalpy because the temperature is, is uh, going down from 310 to 298 Kelvin. All right, so the second step is just your reaction. Okay, uh, that will be the reaction at 298 Kelvin. And again, this is very simple. We're not going to spend time on this because that's simply is taking the enthalpy of formation of products minus reagents and you're done, right? So that will be delta HM for the second step will simply be uh, what we've seen before, right? So that will be just the, the enthalpy of formation, uh, more of products, okay? Minus uh, the sum of the enthalpy of formation uh, of all reagents, and they have to be multiplied by the stoichiometric coefficients. Uh, generally, all this data is going to be provided under standard conditions, so all of these quantities here will have the standard symbol which is this one, that one, that one, that one, that will all always be standard because tables are always going to be under standard conditions. All right, the third step. I right, notice that the third step will be this one, and in this, this step we're taking products and we're actually uh, changing the temperature from T1 to T2, where T1 is 298 Kelvin and T2 is 310 Kelvin, so notice that that would be a heating process. You would, you, you would expect the enthalpy of this third step to be positive. All right, so that would be heat products in this particular case, right? So uh, that is going to be exactly the same formula as what we have for cool reagents, right? So you would start with the integral of the heat capacity, the third differential of T, but if the heat capacity is constant with temperature, then that factors out of the integral. So you simply get this is the sum of the heat capacities of all products, okay, which I guess I can write if I uh, use here I, uh, but again, this depends on, on whether this is reagents on products. Uh, uh, so, and then the temperature will be T 310, which is T2 minus uh, 298 Kelvin, which is T1. And yes, we're gonna spell it out so that you can see how this works. These will only be for products, because notice that step three only involves heating uh, products. So that is just going to be uh, three times times the heat capacity of your product C plus the heat capacity of your product D, standard, and then T2 minus T1. 
Okay, so uh, that's it. This should be positive. This is whatever the reaction is. If it's an exothermic reaction, at 298 Kelvin will be positive. Sorry, negative. It's, if it's endothermic, it will be positive. And uh, that will be cooling, so then uh, that should be a negative enthalpy. You add all those three up, and then you will get exactly what uh, the enthalpy of the reaction is at the temperature that you want, which in this case is 310 Kelvin. All right, so uh, what I'm going to do now is, even though this problem will be well solved as we've done it here, what I'm going to do, it, uh, do now is actually uh, reformulate it a little bit so that you can see that this is exactly the same as Kirchhoff's law, which is something that we're going to see in the next video. But again, both approaches are equivalent, and I'm, gonna, uh, I'm going to start uh, showing that now by doing the following uh, uh, transformation. Notice that this parenthesis that you have right here, right, uh, uh, that's the same as that one, but with reverse sign, right? So what I can do is simply change the sign to everything, right, and then make this be T2 minus T1. Okay, so again, I haven't, I haven't touched anything, you will get exactly the same number uh, uh, using this or what you had before. Let me write that a better one. And the advantage of doing this is that now you can take common factor of this T2 minus T1, right? So notice that when you actually uh, try to add up this one and three right here, so these three, what you're going to have here, it will be the heat capacity of products multiplied by T2 minus T1 minus the heat capacity of reagents multiplied by T2 minus T1, right? So you can actually condense those two steps in just saying those two, the enthalpy uh, the more enthalpy of states uh, 1 and 3, or 1 plus 3, right, which are just these uh, vertical uh, paths in that cycle, is simply going to be the uh, heat capacity of products, uh, which I can write simply as P, uh, minus the uh, sum of the heat capacity of reagents multiplied by the stoichiometry coefficients. All right, and all that multiplies delta T, which is T2 minus T1, okay? And uh, if you want to actually continue to uh, do this a little more, this is simply how the heat capacity changes during the reaction as you go from reagents to products. So we can condense all that into a term that is simply the change in the heat capacity of the reaction, which will be this, and again, that simply the balance of the heat capacity of products minus reagents multiplied by T2 minus T1. Okay? And this term is important because you're going to see in the next video that it's exactly the same thing as you get from Kirchhoff's law. Okay, so to wrap up this video, we have seen one of the methods, one of the two methods that we're going to review to determine uh, how or to evaluate the enthalpy of a reaction at a temperature different from uh, where you have data. In general, you're going to have data to 198 Kelvin. So this uh, path allows you to, to determine the enthalpy of a reaction at a different temperature, higher or lower, than 298 Kelvin, which will be very useful.